What we are going to be discussing today is an overview of what the spouse-based family immigration process looks like when you're adjusting your status to permanent residence in the US. I know that was a mouthful. What it means is if you're a US citizen marrying an immigrant spouse who entered the US legally and they want to apply for a green card in the US, what does the process look like? These are one of the first questions I receive when I consult with a spouse or a couple about the immigration process after they got married. They consult with me because they want to apply for the green card. And this is probably the first 10 minutes of our consultation. So you can save yourself the consultation and just watch this video. But you know, after the video, if you decide you do need an immigration for the process, please feel free to contact me and we will go through it in extreme detail. If you're new to my channel, I'm Puyan Darian. I'm an attorney focused entirely on family-based immigration, and I'll give you videos like this on a weekly basis, so stay tuned. Okay, so how do we begin the adjustment of status process? And when I say adjustment of status, I mean an application for a green card in the US. Um, the first thing we need is a marriage certificate. Before you get married, there isn't anything that we can submit to immigration unless you wanna do a fiance petition. And if you are interested or wanna learn more, you should check out my video specifically on the fiance petition. I did one a few weeks ago, or you could always consult with me and we can go through your possible options and pick the best one. So once you have your marriage certificate, what we are going to do is file an adjustment of status package. This includes several different applications. It's going to be a family petition, a green card application, a work permit application, a permission to travel, which is called advanced parole, and an affidavit of support, which basically says the US citizen petitioner makes enough income to financially support the immigrant spouse until some time has passed. How much time depends on several variables that I've discussed in other videos beyond the scope of this video, as are many of the more intricate nuances and details of the adjustment of status process. So what I do is I will prepare all of these forms and along with your marriage certificate, birth certificates, any prior divorce certificates and some other documents, along with evidence of your relationship, I will prepare a big paper package and I mail it to USCIS. Along with the package, we send them a government filing fee of 1760 along with some passport style two by two inch photographs of the US citizen who is petitioner and the beneficiary, the immigrant spouse who's receiving the benefit. Um, when we mail this package to USCIS, they will several weeks later send my office and the client's residential address some receipt notices in the mail. So you will receive four letters in the mail from USCIS saying that the family petition, the green card application, the work permit and permission to travel are pending. These notices will have receipt numbers, which you can look up on the USCIS case status website to see what the general case status is at any given time. Keep in mind that the USCIS case status website is not very useful for the majority of your case. It's just going to say we received your application on this day, but there might be some updates down the road when major things happen. For example, if USCIS mails you a request for evidence or if they make a final decision on your case, those things will usually be reflected on the USCIS case status website. After we get these notices in the mail and you know your case is pending with USCIS, the immigrant beneficiary, so the immigrant spouse, will receive a biometrics appointment notice. This is usually like one to two months later. And what this notice says is you need to appear at this place and this time with the notice and we're gonna take your fingerprints and a photograph of you. The fingerprints will be used to continue processing your green card and work permit. Uh, they're gonna be used for a background check. And the photograph is the photo that's gonna be printed on your employment authorization, the work permit, and your eventual green card. 
So however you're dressed that day is how you're going to look to the federal government for at least the next few years if your green card is approved. After the biometrics appointment notice, there are a variety of things that could happen. But the two main things that happen in 90% of cases that I've seen are either you will receive a request for evidence or you will receive your employment authorization card, your work permit in the mail. If you receive a request for evidence, it's going to be something like um, you submitted a birth certificate that was in a foreign language and you didn't include an English translation. Or a very common request for evidence is pertaining to the affidavit of support. I just did a video on this. Those requests for evidence are complicated. And I'll repeat, if you've done the whole process without a lawyer up until that point, if you get a request for evidence for the affidavit of support, I strongly recommend hiring a lawyer to reply to it or to at least consult with you before you reply to it, because that can be a really fatal part of the case where if you don't properly respond, your case could get denied, resulting in unlawful presence, loss of the government filing fee and just a bunch of other consequences that you really want to avoid. Let's say you don't get a request for evidence. Everything is processing normally. The next thing is you'll get your employment authorization card in the mail. Um, right now, you'll get your employment authorization and your advanced parole, which is permission to travel at the same time on the same physical card. The bottom of your employment authorization card will say you can use this card to re-enter the United States. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I don't generally recommend traveling unless there's an urgent need because you can be denied re-entry and that would have devastating consequences. Um, after you receive your employment authorization, a long stretch of time will pass and it's just radio silence from USCIS. You're logging in to the website every day to check your case status and there are no updates. It just says your case was received on this date and there have been no status updates or your employment authorization was issued. No status updates since then, even though it happened months ago. This is quite normal and people will contact me. My clients will contact me and say, hey, there haven't been any updates. Is everything OK? And my answer is yes, just keep waiting. If we get close to the expiration date on your work permit, we could always apply to renew it for free while your case is pending. Eventually, USCIS will get around to either interviewing you, issuing another request for evidence to possibly avoid an interview if they're asking for evidence of your good faith marriage, or you can possibly get an approval notice in the mail. Um, at that stage, you either need to prepare for the interview, respond to the government's request, or if it's an approval notice, you've become a permanent resident and congratulations on your new immigration status. After you attend your green card interview and everything goes well, the approval notice will arrive in the mail usually one to two weeks later. And within one to two weeks of that, usually your green card will arrive in the mail. Now I'm going to get a bunch of comments from people saying like my interview was two months ago. I haven't received my green card yet. Are they going to deny the case? Um, it doesn't always get approved and mailed out in two weeks. These are humans. Your file is on someone's desk. Sometimes they go on vacation. Sometimes they get fired or they leave and things get jumbled up. It doesn't necessarily mean something bad's going to happen. Now, when you get your green card, if on the day your green card is approved, you were married for less than two years, your green card should be a conditional green card if you got it through marriage to a US citizen spouse. And what this means is your green card is going to expire in two years. And before it expires, you will need to take an additional step to remove the conditions on your green card. And if you fail to take this step, USCIS can try to terminate your permanent residence, your immigration status, which can eventually result in the issuance of a notice to appear in immigration court. So they'll begin your deportation proceedings. Um, if you're in that situation, speak with an immigration lawyer. Oftentimes it is fixable. 
So it's not the end of the world for some people. After your conditions have been removed, or if you didn't receive a conditional green card and you got a full 10 year green card because your marriage was over two years old when you got your green card, then the next thing I like to talk to my clients about during our closing conversation as we're ending the case is the timeline for citizenship. Because oftentimes, if you're married to a US citizen and that's how you got your green card, and you remain married and continue living together, you can apply for citizenship three years later. You don't need to wait the full five years that other categories of permanent residents need to wait. And actually, you can probably apply 90 days before that three year mark. And what I do is I like to go through the requirements for citizenship, some do's and don'ts for being a permanent resident, for traveling, what to do if you have contact with the police, the need for a possible immigration lawyer in the future if you do have contact with the police, you know, registering to vote, falsely claiming to be a US citizen accidentally or otherwise. These are just some of the issues I like to talk with people after we finish the case and they get their green card. All right, guys, well, that was a brief overview of the green card adjustment of status process for spouses of US citizens. If you got anything of value out of this video, I would appreciate it if you liked the video. If you're interested in immigration related topics, specifically spouse based immigration, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out a similar video on a weekly basis and I'll see you guys next week.